Where are we? I don't know. I don't know where we are. The forces loyal to the king should should be this way. We can't go that way. That's the western path. But they have surge parties and bloodhounds. Well, what do you suggest? They're behind us as well. We need we, we need, need magic. Hide. We need magic is what we need. If we were to turn into a copy of something small, something insignificant, if we could camouflage ourselves to be something that they would never care about. A copy of uh, a copy of Magblast. Something even more insignificant. Than a pair that. of birds. Yes. A pair of cats. Or... Yeah, mm, bloodhounds and cats. A no. pair of mice! Yes! A magic spell! Of course! Right, of course! No, I know my mouse magic. Alright, right. hold still. There's absolutely no way this could go wrong! No! Uh, ready? Uh. Ah! Oh dear. Oh dear. Uh, mm, right. right, now this is right. reversible, right? I'm absolutely sure that, it that is there is a way to. There is. In yes. theory, there is a way to get back from this. Paul! I don't want to do... Mm. Are you optical now? You may remember that for quite a while, people kept asking us if we'd played Mice and Mystics. And we haven't played Mice and Mystics. Lord of Life. Donald Nicky. But now we have played Mice and Mystics, so we can now give you our Mice and Mystics review verdict on Mice and Mystics, on our Mice and Mystics review. But first, what if you don't know what Mice and Mystics Mice is? Mice and Mystics. So here, first of all, comes our opinion on what Mice and Mystics is. Is. Mice and Mystics is a game of magic, of daunting challenges, of swords and sorcery. If, like us, your childhood was full of exciting tales of anthropomorphized creatures overcoming great adversity, you'll immediately feel very at home. Yeah, like, you know, the superhero bear and yeah. sword fighting dogs. Yes. Mouse who's a spy. Yes, yes, that that's, that's enough. Show. If this feels cozy and childlike, then that's not surprising. Designer Jerry Hawthorne took his inspiration from teaching his daughter to read, but we will get to that. This is a cooperative game where you and your friends will take on the kind of sword-bearing and staff-wielding heroes overcoming great challenges, working as a team. Together, you and your friends are gonna have to save a human king from a human sorceress. And how are you gonna do that when you're so little? And if that sounds like a Saturday morning cartoon, it will even more. Well, I show you that the game's divided into chapters that you and your friends are gonna have to read aloud to each other. Chapters with little epilogues, memorable chapters, the fight with the spider in the basement, the duel with the cat in the kitchen, the escape through the pipes beneath the furnace. Yeah, it's all kind of Saturday morning cereal with the animals and the, like, like Top Cat, I mean, it reminds me of Top Cat, which used to always bother me because Top Cat lived in an alley. Yep. Basic, and none of them had any pants. They were all like half dressed and none of them ever wore anything below the waist, just men in an alley. So, yeah. They never cleaned themselves the way that cats do, just some, Dirty men in an alley with no pants, doing nothing all day. Do you, do you want to show them what's inside the box? Yeah. Uh, so, as part of Mice and Mystics, you'll get to enjoy a, a wonderful cornucopia of quite lush components. You've got these modular boards that have things on both sides of them, across which you can have your mousy adventures, and you'll be having those mousy adventures with these lovely figures, really quite intricately cut things representing your mice or spiders, or insects, or cockroaches, things like that, lots of stuff to fight. And then enormous decks of, oh, mousy dice, across which you will score mousy hits and misses when you get into your mousy battles, and just a massive deck of mousy equipment that's, you know, all the standard fantasy staples like daggers and staves and leather armor and spells and, and the ability to levitate and rope things and... There's a, just, lot, there's a lot of stuff, It's a there? lot of stuff, and it's all kind of comfortable fantasy staples, and it's actually a pretty attractive package, to be sure, isn't it? Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. Right, so I'm just immediately asking myself, what's different about Mice and Mystics? Because you've got this lovely modular board, the canvas across which you paint the stories of your mousy adventures, and, and your party turns from novice nibblers into some of the most proficient mammals in the land with big collections of, of spells and magical items and abilities. So what's different? I mean, there's lots of dungeon crawlers around like this now, so it must have a particular player mechanic, or it might have a way of allowing the team to interact with each other, or maybe it's the theme of mice. 
and it's it's the theme of mice. It's actually that's what's different. It's just the theme of mice. It's a game about mice. You're small. You've got to really buy into the whole mice thing. It's just mice. Ah, I don't know if I fully agree. If you're not convinced by Mice and Mystic's sweetest of themes, if your heart doesn't skip a beat at the thought of a little mouse using a needle and thread as a grappling hook, there's still stuff here to entertain a more mechanical, mathematical mind, okay? When you enter a new room in Mice and Mystics in these predetermined boards, you open the book and you read some flavor text, yes, you get some story, yes, but you also get some new rules for whatever encounter you found, whether that's a patrol of rats or some great crow in a tree that's looking to snatch up unwary mice, cockroaches that are stealing cheese off a kitchen table, stuff like this. You have no idea what you're going to get. And throughout a campaign of Mice and Mystics, even though you're playing with these same components every time, these same boards, of which there aren't that many, the game will constantly surprise you as if all these moving pieces were grains of sand in a desert where the wind is constantly blowing it into different shapes. Whenever you play an adventure in Mice and Mystics, it'll be nothing like what you've played before. And that's hugely commendable. Well, yes, that's true. Theme and mechanics and story can all be tied together in a game. And I suppose they are in Mice and Mystics, particularly in Mice and Mystics, because the theme is it's a story. And to reflect that, you have the story track, which is labelled with pages and then marked at some point with a token that says the end. Should you reach that token before your adventure is completed, the game's over, you have to start again. And certain key events as you play will advance you up that track to represent that you're, you're finishing paragraphs of your adventure or you're turning stories. It also gives the game a particular kind of momentum, always propelling you forward because whenever you loiter, whenever you hang around, you gradually fill up this thing called the cheese wheel with more and more pieces of cheese. When you've completely filled that up, you advance another page again. It stops you from hanging around. And yes, I really did just say you fill up a cheese wheel. Anyway, there's random events as well that come at you from the sides. And even when you search for items, that's also randomly determined. And it can make the game a bit like a sort of a ghost train where things just come at you suddenly. You don't know what's coming next. And you don't always know what's significant or what will propel you forwards or what will propel you up that track. And then the combination of random events, of random encounters and random searching, randomly giving you random items means you can play exactly the same adventure twice and it could be quite different each time. But the bad thing can be that you can play exactly the same adventure twice and it can be incredibly difficult sometimes or actually kind of a breeze. But it won't be hugely different and it won't be all that quick either. Mice and Mystics has the feel of an evening game, a game you know you'll be setting aside a few hours for because the next time you step into a castle or sewer or dungeon, you'll be reading a few more paragraphs of flavor text, looking up a few new rules for the encounters you stumble into, and then rolling quite a few dice for the fights you scratch your way through. And to follow on from the windy desert analogy from earlier, all of these moments where you stop and read are like grains of sand clogging up the game's machinery. At worst, Mice and Mystics can feel deathly dry, despite all of the mice and life and art, simply because you're spending more time scratching your head over the rules of a new room than you do enjoying that room. Three damage and potentially stunning me. Oh no, I'm gonna- wait, wait! Ah, oh, too late. Cheese, cheese is f***ing- oh no, the cheese wheel is cheese, full! Cheese wheel's full. So full. that means- oh, we've lost. <laughs> um, uh, oh, that's our own fault. Next, let's move on to the combat of Mice and Mystics, a huge part of any dungeon crawler and a huge part of your excitement. Surely you have to roll these fabulous custom dice and see how many times you swing your hammer and hit the millipede and how hard you do it. About how much damage you cause with your lightning spell. Hmm. So Mice and Mystics is part story game, part combat game, but as a combat game, it feels like a story game. The best thing you can say about it is that it's thematic. Look, my favourite thing is how, rather than having a grid, you have flagstones to determine where you're all moving. And that's fun. You can climb on tables. That's fun. But everything else about it just felt a bit stodgy. Compared to something like Descent, where the heroes are always making decisions whether to rush ahead or stay behind to do the risky move. M moves with deadly consequences. In our first few hours with Mice and Mystics, we never felt once like we made an interesting decision in combat. It is, tragically, very much move forward, roll the dice. And if you lose one of those fights, which you might, or if events aren't really on your side and the story track catches up with you, you have to start the adventure again from scratch. And this can happen because Mice and Mystics isn't really a pushover. It can be quite a difficult 
game. And sometimes like the sudden snap of a trap, it can surprise you with its harshness. Quinn said it reminded him a little bit of a video game or a certain kind of video game. And it kind of does. It shepherds you down this particular path and it takes you from event to event, set piece to set piece and an encounter to encounter and and makes you fight through these things. And if you lose them or if, if one of these doesn't quite work out and you run out of time or you run out of health, then it's just... It's all over because if it is a video game, it's like a video game from the 80s without any checkpointing and you're going to have to improvise your own jury rig, your own safe system or house rules about where you're going to start again from because some of these things are a bit long. Ready to go again? From the top? Can we do it? Look, no, if we go back no. and we'll say that just what, like one tile away. Okay. So where were you? Were you here? I... Mice and Mystics just isn't quite for me. And the thing is, I'm really happy to be a mouse and to have a mouse staff and roll some dice to see how much damage, wow, my mouse staff does to a rat that I'm fighting. And Loads I'm, of damage. I'm actually quite happy to sort of follow the, the trail, the breadcrumb trail of a plot as it takes me from point to point and set piece to set piece. I can get behind that, but there are other games that just do this a bit better and a bit cleaner and a bit smoother. So I don't like Mice and Mystics really all that much, but maybe you will. Maybe you'll like it more. And I can see a lot of people getting more invested in the theme. And I can see families enjoying playing the game together and parents and children donning armor together and eating cheese together and going into dungeons to explore together. And the rules are not simple, but they're not really too complicated. And they're certainly not too complicated for kids. I mean, pro tip, never underestimate kids anyway. Well, you know, that's the thing. In targeting itself at families... Mice and Mystics isn't really appealing at any one person in a family. For a kid, this game is much too slow. For someone who hasn't played board games, it's way too complicated with a too manual... Too heavy and stodgy. Yeah, and a manual that's going to scare everybody off. If you do play board games, you're just going to be disappointed that none of the systems are particularly exciting. But yeah, as Paul says, if you want to like Mice and Mystics, this game is going to draw more of those people in than usual because it is it is so gorgeous and it does offer a glittering golden reward at the end. A story, a saga full of variety and twists that you can share together and remember forever but it's a saga that comes at a terrible cost. In the same way Lord of the Rings was a saga but one where every other page was another cocking song, Mice and Mystics offers a saga where every single page has another wet wad of rules. So who's it for? Uh, I mean, like a mouse, is it just kind of falling between cracks? Basically, it's for people who like the idea of a mouse with a button, huh. which is a crazy... On, yeah, because the theme on the button. A mouse, hang on. With a, a mouse, mouse with, with a button. A button. <sighs> All this talk of cheese is making me hungry. We should we should do fondue. I found a recipe on the internet. That's a cheese recipe. Oh, should you shouldn't that. eat anything you find on the internet. It's like the floor. Oh. So, uh, there's also an expansion, Mice and Mystics Heart of Glorm, and this adds another campaign to Mice and Mystics, as well as more mice, mm. more mystics, uh, slugs. We would love to recommend it, because it's the first board game expansion we've seen that adds love to a board game, but in practice, you're only going to know if you want this the instant you close the final page on Mice and Mystics. Everyone else should steer well clear of these mouse-infested waters until they've finished the base campaign. Yeah. So if we're steering clear of that for now and the cheese for now, uh, I can rustle something else up. Okay. What, what do you got for me? Uh, no idea. Oh! Um, fuck!